In this video, we are forecasting a multi-day severe weather outbreak that will affect many in the U.S. The Storm Prediction Center has put out a slight risk of severe weather today with a 15% chance of damaging wind. We're going to talk about how this threat's going to intensify and expand down to the south and east as we go forward. Welcome back, y'all. Ryan Hall here with the weather forecast. Uh, some of you were asking uh, for an echo update. So here he is. He just woke up from a nap. Okay, so he's kind of he's still pretty overwhelmed from all the screens and stuff. How's it going, Echo? You doing good today? I don't even know what that means. He's kicking the microphone. <laughs> Uh, so he is officially 11 weeks old now. So Echo, I think you're ready uh, to give us the weather forecast yourself, Echo. Let's go ahead and tell him what's up. I don't think he's ready uh, to give the weather forecast just yet, but we'll ch we'll keep checking in with him month after month. Eventually, uh, you'll talk to us. Am I right there? You, instead of just kicking the microphone. <laughs> Well, Echo, thank you for showing up today on the Ryan Hall Y'all Forecast video. We're going to let you get back to doing baby things. Oh, he sees himself. He sees himself. You see yourself? Look at him. He's looking directly into his own eyes there on the screen. <laughs> all right. We'll, we'll let you get back to doing uh, baby things, all right? We'll see you, Echo. Bye. All right. Here's a big old view of the United States of America, and we actually do have some stuff going on today. First of all, check this out up here in Maine. We're actually talking about some isolated areas of uh, moderate snow showers. This is all north of I-95. Okay, it's raining down in Portland. But once again, up here in northern Maine near the uh, Quebec border there, uh, we're talking about some uh, light to moderate snow showers. That's going to be moving to the south and west, but it will be turning into all rain as it moves into southern areas of New Hampshire when this video comes out, okay? Now, we've also got a heavy area area of rain over here in Michigan moving towards Detroit. Uh, by the time this video goes up, the rain will be in Detroit and it'll be fizzling out, okay? Once this moves towards Cleveland and across the lake here, it will be uh, fizzling out as we go later on into the day. There might be some rain showers that make it into Erie and Jamestown, but I wouldn't count on it ruining your day, okay? Same thing over here in Iowa and Illinois. These are going to fizzle out as the day goes on, but more storms are going to form to the west and those could be severe. Let's talk about that on the weather models. All right, let's start off with the HER model, the high resolution rapid refresh model. We kind of use this as our simulated radar to show you what it could look like as we go into the future. If you want to keep up with the date and time, it's always going to be above my head right there. And we're starting off around the time this video goes up today around 2 p.m. As you can see, all the rain has pretty much cleared out of Iowa and Minnesota, and it's pretty much clear out there. If we take a look at the temperatures around this time today, we're talking about high temperatures in the 80s for some parts of Minnesota, South Dakota, Nebraska. I mean, it's going to be a scorcher out there today for this time of year especially for this part of the country. Uh, but of course, we're going to ruin that with our rain chances. Let's go back to our radar here and let's put it into motion. As you can see, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, we're clear, okay? And actually, that's a good thing, okay? If we would have had these storms form up a little bit sooner to interact with that heating of the day, uh, we probably would have seen these storms be a little bit stronger. But the fact that they're happening around the time the sun is setting, there's going to be a little bit less convective energy out there for these storms to work with. Therefore, they won't be as severe today. That's why we've just got that slight risk of severe weather. And let's push this one frame forward, 8 p.m., 9 p.m., and 10 p.m. There we go. 10 p.m. tonight, uh, around 10, probably around 9 p.m. Central is when we're going to see these first storms pop up here right around Central Minnesota. We've also got some storms popping up down here in Nebraska and South Dakota as well. Uh, but these right here are going to be the most severe ones. And these storms, guys, are expected to break the severe limits. But it's nothing to freak out about, okay? We're going to be talking about some isolated uh, straight line damaging winds and mostly a big hail event here as this is uh, as there's plenty of cold air aloft up here in the northern part of the United States right now and these storms are going to have big updrafts and they're going to access that cold air once again we're, we're just we're probably going to see a lot of hail from these storms as they move off to the east and they are going to move towards Duluth there according to this model Duluth gets uh, missed by the biggest part of the storms as they move off uh, but you can see there we've got some storms moving into the northern Wisconsin area and they continue to move off to the east there as we go into 4 a.m. on Tuesday. And just for giggles, let's go ahead and check out the Great Lakes region as well. This is all going to be very below severe limits as it moves through Ontario, uh, through the upper peninsula of Michigan, and into Michigan itself. You can see here there's going to be some thunder, there's going to be some lightning, some heavy rain, but these storms are not expected to do much as they move through the area on Tuesday. Okay, now around 8 p.m., there might be some stronger storms with some hail popping up here in northeastern Wisconsin. Uh, but once again, the main event here is actually going to be tomorrow uh, 
And that's what we're gonna talk about right now. Let's rewind it here. And there's those storms that are gonna go through uh, Minnesota today into Wisconsin. And once again, if you live in this area up here, be ready for some severe weather today. Once again, the tornado threat is absolutely really low, uh, but the hail and damaging wind threat is up there. So if you got a carport to move your car into, go ahead and do that. And just make sure you have some way of getting a severe weather warning, uh, just in case we do get a more considerable severe thunderstorm heading towards your area, you'll know all about it. Now, once again, uh, here's the day two outlook. The Storm Prediction Center uh, has put out a slight risk of severe weather for tomorrow, a little bit further south. You can see that pretty clear here. And uh, this one right here looks to be the more significant event of the ones that we're going to be talking about today. Uh, but it's still nothing crazy. It's not our moderate or high risk events that we've been talking about down in uh, Dixie Alley for the past couple of weeks. This one looks a little bit more subdued. There's a cap in the atmosphere. There's a warm layer just above the surface that's going to try to keep those updrafts from really penetrating up into the air. If that wasn't there and we had more moisture, we would be talking about a widespread possible tornado outbreak here. But since we're in early April and we have limited moisture and we do have that cap in place, I do think that this is not going to be a widespread event. However, I do expect that there could be a possible enhanced risk put out here for these people. And I'll explain to you why right now. Let's check it out. Let's put this radar into motion. And as you can see, we've got a whole big old bona fide storm coming together over here in Wyoming. Uh, we've got heavy snow on the north side. Actually, we're talking about heavy snow in southern Montana, all the way over into Idaho and northeastern Utah. And through much of Wyoming here, we're going to be talking about some accumulating snow on the backside here with some really strong winds too. We could see intermittent blizzard conditions with this storm as it moves through central Wyoming. And then as it moves to the east, you can see we've got a little bit of a warm front trying to come up here. And obviously that's going to try to punch some colder and drier air down here on the south side. And that's what's going to cause our storms. Let's push this further into motion. And as you can see, those storms really start popping up around 8 p.m., 7 p.m. Central tomorrow. And once again, this is a good thing if you don't want the severe weather out there, because if they were to form a little bit earlier and take advantage of that heating of the day a little bit more, because once again, this is going to be another a hot day out here. We could have been talking about some stronger storms, but here we are around 8 p.m. 7 p.m. Central, we've got some big storms popping up here in Kansas. And then the whole northern part of this warm sector uh, just blows up with some storms here all the way up through uh, Minnesota once again into Wisconsin, uh, southeastern South Dakota, eastern Nebraska. You know, we're going to be talking about some heavy rain, some lightning and some thunder up here. But I do believe the most intense area of severe weather is going to be down here with this uh, convective linear system that's forming up. Once again, the main threat here is going to be big hail and straight line damaging winds, especially with this storm. Uh, but there is actually a 2% chance of tornadoes, of course to the Storm Prediction Center here. Uh, so this one looks like we need to take it a little bit more seriously in southern Nebraska, central and southern Kansas. It's going to be a broad area here where an isolated tornado or two cannot be ruled out, okay? Let's just see where these storms end up going and they do push into Missouri and Iowa. But at this point, as we get into 8 a.m. on Wednesday morning, they're going to be pretty weak, okay? Lightning, thunder, heavy rain, nothing to worry about. But you can see some more cold air coming in behind here. You can see that cold front moving through um, and actually, what's happening here is this storm has moved off to the northeast and we've got enough energy on the southern side that another storm system is forming here that's going to bring another area of interest for severe weather as we go into the future. We'll talk about that here in a second, but first, you guys know I have to do it. I'm going to rewind it a little bit and let's talk a little bit more about tomorrow's severe weather threat because once again, there is that slight chance of tornadoes and a little bit more of an elevated chance of those damaging winds and large hail. So let's talk about that here. First thing I want to talk about is moisture, okay? This is one of the biggest limiting factors on this storm. Uh, once again, if this was higher, if we were talking about dew points up in the 70s, this would be a big uh, severe weather outbreak because a lot of the other parameters are there. Uh, but we're only going to be talking about um, dew points in the 50s and maybe in, in the 60s down here in southern Kansas where the convection is going to be happening. But we do have a dry line coming in. We do have an area of much drier air moving in behind it. That's going to force that warm and moist air up into the atmosphere and cause our big uh, supercell thunderstorms to pop up. Let's put this into motion. You can see those uh, dew points do try to rise. They do try to culminate right there where those storms are going to form up. Once again, we're talking about upper 50s, lower 60s right here where the big storms are going to be forming. And that's enough to get some severe thunderstorms. Don't get me wrong, but it's not enough for a widespread, especially not a widespread, a tornado outbreak. Uh, so that's, once again, that's a big limiting factor here along with the cap. But you can see clearly here the, the dry line and the cold front that will be moving all the way down into uh, Oklahoma and Texas. And that actually is going to be another uh, factor that sparks our next severe weather 
outbreak as we move into the future over here. We're not there yet though. We're gonna keep focusing on this one. Let's rewind again. And we're gonna look at convective available potential energy. This is the fuel needed for storms to form. And you can see there's actually some really good areas of cape out here. We're talking about maybe close to 2,500 uh, joules per kilogram down here in Kansas where these storms are first gonna form. Uh, that's enough to get some big thunderstorms going, especially with the big hail and the damaging winds. And you can see those storms do take advantage of the cape as it disappears quickly as we move into 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m. in the morning. Those storms are gonna carry that convective energy with them into the Kansas City area, but they will weaken quickly. Now let's look at that lower level jet stream, okay? Here's something really interesting about this. You know, this kind of has a neutral tilt to it here, so it's nothing crazy, but when we push this into motion, you can see this ramps up to, you know, 60, 70 knots here around southeastern Kansas around 11 p.m. at night. So that lower level jet stream is going to be screaming, okay? This is a mean little storm. It's a nasty storm, but the reason this isn't going to cause a big tornado outbreak down here like uh, this jet stream has the capability of doing is because of the limited moisture. It's because of that warm level layer of air in the atmosphere, the cap. Um, and it's just because this isn't happening in May, pretty much. If this was happening in May, uh, we'd be talking about a big tornado outbreak here as this lower level jet stream would definitely allow for some uh, shear in the atmosphere. Definitely gonna be some helicity down there as that secondary low pressure system starts to uh, rotate around it. So that lower level jet stream does look intense as we move forward, uh, but thankfully the moisture and the convective energy there is not gonna be enough uh, to really get those storms sparking, especially this far south where the jet stream is really getting close to uh, maybe even 80 knots down here around 2 a.m. on Wednesday, April 7th. And then check this out. This is the significant tornado parameter. It's a composite model that shows, you know, where conditions are favorable for significant tornadoes to form. And man, we're maxed out. Once again, when that jet stream really starts ramping up, we are maxed out down here in Oklahoma and Texas. But once again, there will be no convection down here. Okay. There will be not, there will not be enough lift down here. So, uh, you know, you can have uh, tornado parameters off the charts, but if there's no storm, to interact with that, then you don't have to worry about it. So thankfully, I don't think that Northern Texas or South Central or Southwestern Oklahoma is gonna have to worry about tornadoes. Uh, but right here at the very tip of this increased area of significant tornado parameter, uh, there will be storms feeding on that Southern side. So we've gotta watch Southern Kansas, especially during the late hours of Tuesday uh, for the possibility for some of those storms that pop up to rotate and maybe put down a brief tornado or two, okay? Okay, now let's switch over to the NAM three kilometer model and let's take a look at that day three outlook, okay? Once again, already on day three, we've got that slight risk of severe weather down here in the south, and that's with this same storm. Actually, it's a new low pressure system that's forming here. It's gonna re-spark up a severe weather threat down here, so let's check that out on the NAM model, the three kilometer NAM model. We've lost some resolution, but we can still see what's going on. There's your secondary spin, look at that. Uh, you can see the uh, rotation there really well, and you can see that cold air coming in behind it with some snow showers there in uh, west central Kansas around 12 p.m noon on Wednesday. Look at that. And then once again, you can see that dry line and cold front moving through. It's going to spark those storms here in Arkansas, Missouri, and possibly even into Mississippi and Tennessee as we go later on into the day. Here we are at 4 p.m. That's when we can start to see some of those bigger storms uh, popping up in Arkansas. And once again, guys, oh, the lights are flat. Somebody just became a member. <laughs> Make sure you join the channel, guys. Become a member today. <laughs> Anyway, this is a lower resolution model, so the storms don't look as nasty here as they do on the HRRR, but don't worry about that, okay? Check this out. Look at that cape that's building up here, okay? We're talking about 1,500 to 2,000 joules per kilogram available down here in Arkansas and, you know, in this area right here. And those storms are going to be eating it up as we go into 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 p.m. on Wednesday. This is going to be another day that we have to watch closely for possibly an upgrade to an enhanced risk of severe weather uh, because the parameters are a little bit higher down here. Once again, that lower level jet stream is going to be handed off to that secondary circulation and it does look like it's going to be pretty intense once those storms are forming over here in Arkansas, but it does weaken a little bit. We're talking about 30 to 40 knots, maybe a couple areas near 50 knots there. Uh, so we do have to watch out for the tornado threat again uh, in Arkansas, southeastern Missouri, western Tennessee, northwestern Mississippi on Wednesday, April 7th, okay? Let's play these storms all the way out and you can see that's the last frame, April 7th at 8 p.m. Uh, we've got a squall line of storms now now possibly moving through uh, the Mississippi River and Tennessee Valley areas down here uh, and the deep south. So we've got to watch 
not only the southern portion here for the increased damaging wind and uh, tornado threat, but also in the northern portion here, okay? This is the cold core area of the storm. There's gonna be a triple point here. There's gonna be a warm front, a cold front, an occlusion front. Uh, and right there in the triple point, that's where we can expect once again, possibly another area of strong storms to form. So uh, this is three days out. We're gonna watch this one closely and I'm gonna be uploading every day until this whole severe weather outbreak is over. Uh, so stay tuned, subscribe, and we'll talk more about about this third this this storm uh, in tomorrow's video uh, but I do think we got to focus more on the the more imminent storms right now that way we're not overwhelmed with information okay all right let's really briefly now talk about the future uh, just real briefly because we've spent so much time talking about the short-term for forecast which we should but I do want to mention that there is more coming okay so here's our storm that we're talking about right now on Wednesday and Thursday that's going to be moving off into the Ohio Valley and the deep south there and we'll talk more about that as time goes on but here comes another storm look at this on Saturday April 10th uh, this one looks like it could be another severe weather situation down here in the deep south and this one looks like it could be pretty significant so we're going to watch that one closely and then we do have another little storm that tries to spark up an area of strong storms all the way from Wisconsin down to Texas on April 12th and then we kind of quiet down a little bit but it's after this point after April 14th uh, some of the longer range data is pointing towards uh, things becoming really active once again so uh, we're gonna watch that closely the next two videos that I do I'm not going to briefly go over the medium range forecast because we'll have so much to talk about in the short term but so I just really wanted to show you this today because the next two days are probably going to be a little bit more busy with severe weather okay okay that's all the weather talk I have for you today I hope you enjoyed it okay make sure you like the video subscribe if you haven't already and turn those notifications on also if you're a member of the channel you saw the lights flash earlier <laughs> these lights flash anytime somebody becomes a member but I've increased two new levels of the channel membership okay used to it only went up to high risker now we have an extreme risker and an official channel sponsor okay <laughs> this is not required of you you do not have to become a member but there's a lot of people who want to support the channel in a big way and I really appreciate that you guys have seen the storm seeker you know that's gonna take some funds to uh, make that continue to be a reality so if you want to support the channel in that way I I will. I'm totally going to let you. Okay. Now, uh, if you're an extreme risker at the end of the videos, you're going to get a highlighted shout out because as you've seen recently, the high risk shout outs are kind of the list is just getting really long. So if you're an extreme risker, you're going to be at the top of that list highlighted. And also this is optional, but if you want to, we can get together every once in a while and chat via zoom. FaceTime or whatever you want to do. If you want to talk about the weather, food, anything in the world, uh, that's been requested. So now that's an option. If you don't want to talk to me though, you don't have to. <laughs> and then on top of that, we also have an official channel sponsor. That's right. That's, that's going to be the top uh, level probably ever. I don't think I'll do anything more than that. But if you become an official channel sponsor, uh, I'll actually put your name on or in the Storm Seeker. That's right. Instead of covering up my Storm Seeker truck with brand logos, I'm going to be putting your names on there if you become an official storm uh, seeker sponsor okay so you don't have to upgrade your membership i i appreciate every member and uh, no matter what level you're at but uh, people wanted to support more so now you have those options guys thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next one goodbye